How's it going, friends? My name is Fringy, and welcome to Fringy Frequency for November 8th, 2014. I'm going to start off with some rather unfortunate news. I'm probably going to be gone for the next couple of weeks. I may upload a video here or there, but it's exam time, and i got to do some work. I may do a couple of streams, but I can't make any promises. So, to tide you over for the next couple of weeks, I decided to go all out and do a really long episode discussing a very important topic. A topic that I've avoided for about two fucking months, purely because I had no idea what the fuck it was about, or whether or not I should even dive into it, being the fucking craziness that it is. I'm coming at it from both sides. I've looked at all the information I can. I've looked at other people's opinions. I've seen all the shit that's happened over the past couple of months. So now it's time for me to weigh in on what my opinion is on this topic. Gamergate. I'm sure you've all heard of Gamergate. It seems hard that any of you couldn't have heard about it. It's been on Twitter for like the past two fucking months. Over 60,000 uses per day. It's big. But it's fucking confusing to me. Now, this may surprise a lot of you, but I am not part of Gamergate. I'm not in the Gamergate bandwagon. I'm not part of the movement, and I probably never will be, even if they listen to what I say today. Mainly because I don't need to be part of a fucking group, a huge group, to express my opinions. I don't need to be a Gamergator or a non-Gamergator. I'm just fringy, and I got my own opinions. But regardless, I'd like to talk about Gamergate, what it is, what's wrong with it, and how to make it better. As well as talking about the opposition and the shitbag tactics that they've used against people who are part of Gamergate to completely divert the fucking conversation from where it should have been. So Gamergate started a couple of months ago, and it originated from the Zoe Quinn bullshit. How it got revealed that she fucked a bunch of guys, a lot of them being part of the industry, most notably Nathan Grayson, a cunt bag that we'll get to in a minute. That's where it started from. But now, Gamergate has gotten way bigger. So much so that it is a confusing fucking mess. It is. It's a fucking mess. Anybody who's part of the Gamergate movement, don't bullshit me, okay? You know it's a fucking mess. I know it's a mess. My biggest problem with Gamergate right now is a very distinct lack of direction. Gamergate has gotten so big that it's split off into a bunch of tangents instead of having clear focus. Now, obviously, this isn't really your fault. Uh, it's partly due to the fact that the movement got too big, and it's partly due to the fact that the opposition of your movement fucked up the conversation and diverted it to what they wanted, which I'll talk about later. But right now, Gamergate has a complete lack of focus, which is why I can't, uh, in, I can't really understand it or get on with it, even though I'll never be part of the Gamergate movement anyway, because I'm not a fucking hive mind sheep. But anyway, if you went up to someone who said they were part of Gamergate and you asked them what they thought and then asked someone else what it was about, I'm sure you get two very different answers. You would. Because really, <coughs> there is no solid course. There's no real solid idea of what Gamergate is, what it's actually about, and what they're trying to achieve. Like I said, it started with the whole Zoe Quinn, Nathan Grayson, Kotaku shit, but somehow it's diverged into Anita Sarkeesian, Brianna Wu, and all this feminist bullshit, and apparently men not wanting women to be part of video games. Y you see the fucking disconnect there. Started from journalistic integrity to feminism. That shit doesn't make sense to me. And modern day feminism is so toxic that whenever it gets part of a conversation, it's like, nah, I'm fucking out. I'm fucking out. And I don't say that a lot. <clears throat> I very rarely say, nah, I'm out. I'm, I'm done. I'm not doing this. But because the fact that the feminists are part of it, these modern day feminists and fucking idiots and social justice warriors, I'm out. Now I'm talking about the opposition. These are the opposition. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's the opposition's fault that this has happened. The opposition has deliberately swayed the conversation from where it started, which was about specific events of corruption in games journalism and a breach of ethics and ethical conduct. And they have changed it into harassment about doxing and all this other bullshit. And I'll tell you whose fault that was. That was the fault of gaming websites. And, and I'll tell you why they did it. Because 
the re the reality was that the way Gamergate was before put their business model and their fucking companies in extreme jeopardy. After we saw the Nathan Grayson bullshit, people were going after Kotaku, rightfully so, because they were being fucking morons. I don't give a fuck if he was writing about Zoe Quinn's game Depression Quest. I don't give a fuck if their relationship ended before they covered it. The fact that Nathan Grayson decided to go and have a relationship with a developer and did not inform Steven Totillo, the editor-in-chief of Kotaku, about this is a breach in ethical conduct. Because, look, whoever Zoe Quinn wants to fuck, that's her own business. I don't give a fuck. I really don't give a shit who she decides to have sex with. But the, Nathan Grayson is a journalist. And if he's fucking someone who they could potentially be covering in the future or at that time, that shit needs to be exclosed. End of fucking story. I don't want to hear any of that shit. And I don't know if people said to me, oh, but he didn't cover her game. Or, oh, you know, they weren't in their relationship at the time, which is bullshit. And, oh, no, they, it, they weren't in a relationship. Okay, no, bullshit. Steven Totillo confirmed on Twitter that they were in a, re in a relationship and that, uh, that this fuckwad didn't actually tell them. Nathan Grayson never told Steven Totillo that he was having sex with, uh, Zoe Quinn. Now, the problem here is that because he's a journalist, there could be some conflict of interest. And I don't want to hear any shit about, oh, no, he's ethical or he wasn't covering the game. Doesn't matter, Okay. If fucking Colin Moriarty from IGN, who's part of the PlayStation team, decided to go out and fuck Bonnie Ross, I don't give a fuck if he doesn't talk about Halo. That shit should still be disclosed, because that's what transparency is. And that is why Gamergate started. Sure, some people probably focused on the fact that Zoe Quinn was fucking a bunch of guys. I mean, obviously those guys are insane, because who the fuck would want to have sex with Zoe Quinn? But, but regardless, that was good. At that time, I was like, yeah, I can get behind that. I mean, I've been talking about ethical uh, misconduct and bullshit in games journalism for one and a half years. Uh, I ought to give a pat on my back for doing it before there was a fucking hashtag behind it. But when they were focusing on that, that was good. But then what happened? Oh, no, we had Polygon and fucking IGN and all these cunt bags who then wrote out Articles basically on the same day like, oh, the term gamer is dead. And then started to basically talk shit about the gaming community and about gamers in general and put them down and make them seem like pieces of shit. And then they wondered why people were upset. I mean, basically what they did was they were basically pulling down their pants and dropping a huge duke in your mouth. That's what they were doing. They were talking about gamers as if they were fucking losers. Complete basement dwelling losers. Who had no friends. They couldn't talk to women. Socially awkward, you know, nerds. Nerds, because of course, these guys who write for these websites aren't hipster loser fuckwads too. But, but anyway, basically shitting on gamers. And saying that the term gamer is dead, when gaming, in terms of at least PC gaming is particularly, is at an all-time high. And the fact that like 60 fucking percent of people in the Western world play video games. But no, all, all gamers are basement-dwelling losers. And see, then they started to bring in this, this sexism shit. They started to bring in this sexism shit, and then that threw the whole conversation out the fucking window and ruined it. It changed Gamergate from a movement that was about ethical misconduct in games journalism about specific events and turned it into this super broad thing about feminism. And then we have Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, Brianna Wu, and all of these people and developers and all these motherfuckers saying that gamers were pieces of shit who hated women, who hated minorities, which is fucking bullshit. It is bullshit. Now, let's talk about these guys and the arguments that they made that threw Gamergate out the, uh, into a completely different direction and basically sh shifted focus from what was actually important to something that doesn't matter. This whole feminism bullshit and how gamers hate women or, you know, or if you listen to Anita Sarkeesian, the biggest fucking con artist ever, that apparently gamers want to preserve gaming as an all-boys club. 
I'm sorry, but that's bullshit. Now, I've, I've gone on record to say many times that a lot of gamers are male. I don't give a fuck what those statistics say about how many people are actually gaming. It includes, like, mobile games and shit. More men play video games than women. That's true. But a lot of women play video games. I mean, I already know that my statistics on my YouTube channel, there's a fair number of them who are women. And I'm a channel. There are a lot of these female gamers that just like to play video games. We know there are a lot of female gamers. And I'm just going to tell you right now, if you think that gamers want to keep gaming as an all-boys club, you need a lobotomy. Because your head is so fucking backwards that a lobotomy would actually increase your IQ. I'm going to tell you right now, nobody really gives a fuck who you are when they're playing a video game. No one actually gives a shit. Some people may say they care, but they don't. I especially don't. And this is why I find the shit that Anita Sarkeesian is saying to piss me off immensely. Saying that all gamers won is an all boys club. Just because they don't like you because of the stupid shit that you've said. I don't give a fuck what race you are, what gender you are, what sexual orientation you are. As long as you like to play games, that's fine and fucking dandy with me. As if you needed my permission to begin with. I don't give a fuck if you're Arab or Chinese or black like me or white or a female or a male or transgender or gay or a lesbian. I don't care because you're a human being just like me. There's nothing fucking wrong with you. It's not like you don't fit in. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck what gender you are. And most people don't give a shit. The only people who give a shit are the very small minority. The vocal minority that have kind of tainted all the logical people who are part of Gamergate. But you gotta understand that those people who hate women and who don't want women to be part of gaming, they make up a very small portion of not only people who are in Gamergate, but the people who are gamers in general. And the only people who are like that are probably stuck in the fucking Rancor pit, and they aren't Luke Skywalker. They're the fucking Rancor. But regardless, it's stupid for you to say that, those sorts of things. And this is my other problem with the opposition too, is the- I know that broad strokes paint the, the fence faster, but your broad strokes are completely inaccurate. The things that you've been saying about gamers are just complete bullshit. They are, they're complete bullshit. Claiming that all the people who are in Gamergate hate you. Uh, now, I hate you. I think you're a cunt. But <laughs> that doesn't matter. And ultimately, I will say this to you who are in Gamergate. Ignore Anita Sarkeesian. Ignore her. I know that I usually say ignoring doesn't help. But this is one of those few situations where you gotta ignore her. The more attention you give her, the more she can peddle her bullshit. The more she can go on fucking Colbert's show. And manage to get the fucking statistics, the fucking comments disabled. Especially when she couldn't answer a question about sexism in video games and they edited that out. But seriously, no, I'm not talking about Anita Sarkeesian. See, this gets you off topic. So I'm going to tell you, how do we fix Gamergate? How do you fix Gamergate? Refocus it on what matters and refocus it on what is important about what Gamergate was and what you need to keep it to be. Now, if you make these changes, I'm still not going to be part of Gamergate. I'm never going to be part of Gamergate because I'm just fringy. I have my own opinions. I don't need to be part of a stupid hashtag just to talk about ethical misconduct in games journalism. I've been doing that for one and a half years, and I didn't need some stupid hipster bitch to sh fuck some stupid hipster dude and all this other shit. So, with Gamergate, what you need to do... It's gotten really big, so this is not going to make any difference, but hey, fuck it. I want to talk about it. Here's what you do. Stop talking about feminism. Stop talking about the social justice warriors. Stop giving these fuckers the attention that they want. This is a situation where I, I usually say, you know, that argument, if you don't like it, don't buy it or don't watch it is a bullshit argument. But in this situation, that is what you need to do. These websites want your attention. They want your clicks. They want you to harass them. They want you to yell at them because then they can say, Oh, look at all this vitriolic reaction we get from the gaming community. They hate women. Even though, again, vocal minority. Very vocal minority. 
But you got to stop talking about Anita Sarkeesian. You got to stop talking about Zoe Quinn. I don't even know why you talk about Zoe Quinn. Why do you care who she has sex with? It doesn't matter. But we got to ignore Anita Sarkeesian, okay? I know she says stupid things. I know. I know she's full of shit. I know she's a fucking liar and that her points are bullshit and that she doesn't actually play video games. But you have to ignore her because the more you threaten... And oh, and by the way, guys, if you threaten her, stop it. Fucking stop it. Don't threaten people with violence just because you don't like what they say. I think Anita Sarkeesian's full of shit. I don't agree with a single thing she says. But does that mean I have the right to threaten to kill her? Fuck no. Stop it. You are making things worse. But back to the point. Ignore Anita Sarkeesian. Ignore Brown and Root. Ignore all these fucking websites like IGN and especially fucking Polygon and shit. Talking shit about gamers. Ignore them. Don't go to their websites. Boycott them. Boycott them and then they'll have to listen to you. We've already seen a lot of people, a lot of advertisers pull out of the websites that are treating gamers like shit. If the website treats gamers like shit, don't read their articles or enable ad block and talk about how shit the articles are. Don't, but at the same time, don't read them. Don't give them the attention that they want. Number two, refocus on what Gamergate started as. And what Gamergate started as was talking about that chunder brain fuck with Nathan Grayson. You should be petitioning to get Nathan Grayson fired from Kotaku. He, he, he should be fired. He should be fired. He, he breached ethical conduct and he should be fired. So, it, and, and you need to do it because if you show that, okay, we, we will boycott Kotaku unless they fire Nathan Grayson, they'll listen. They'll kick his ass onto the fucking curb where he deserves to be because he's not a journalist. He doesn't have you in his best interest at most of these websites don't, but... I would recommend that you never go to Kotaku anyway, because it's a shit website. But for those of you who like Kotaku, you got to boycott them and tell them to fire Nathan Grayson. Make an example of him and say, this is what happens when you breach ethical conduct and elude gamers. You get your ass put on the fucking curb, and that's the end of it. End of story. You're fucked. Your career is over. If you fuck gamers over and mislead gamers. If he gets made an example of, you'll be sure as shit to see a lot of other websites cut the fucking fat or at least put in policies into place that will allow them to do these things number three focus on transparency what we want to do is get these websites to be more ethical and to really be transparent with us now uh, this is something i'd say for a lot of youtubers as well there are a lot of youtubers who have not been transparent but we want transparency. Tell them we want to know who's covering this, you know, all this sort of shit. What are your policies when it comes to ethics? Make this shit available to us. Some websites have already done it, and I applaud those websites for taking the initiative. That's what you need to get them to do. Take the argument away from feminism because feminism is not important to gaming and refocus it onto games journalism because that's where it started. That's where it should be. And once you do that, you'll get some real progress made because as it stands right now, Gamergate has about the traction of a fucking uh, tortoise. It's not moving anyway. It doesn't have direction. And we're just having shit thrown at gamers and not and, and even including people who aren't part of Gamergate, like me, people getting shit thrown at them by the mainstream media. Because the mainstream media obviously doesn't like that Gamergate started as something to attack media. Now, for the last portion of the episode, I want to talk about why Gamergate is a sign of why gaming depresses me now. Look at all this bullshit drama that we've had on the internet for the past two months. And this is not the... This is not even all of it. For the last two years in particular, something has fucking happened to gaming. Where it's all this bullshit drama... All this fucking nonsense and all of this controversy and bullshit and people who have no dick and they've just got a fucking breeze blown between their legs. All this drama surrounding gaming, resolutions, graphics, the fucking next-gen consoles, feminism, racism, all this bullshit that's part of gaming. It makes me upset. You may not think that because my channel is basically predicated on all this bullshit, but I don't like it. I don't like the fact that gaming has turned into such a fucking comedic show and such a mess and a joke because as it stands right now, I'm fucking sick of the gaming community. 
I'm sick of the gaming industry. I'm sick of the gaming community. I'm sick of fucking all of it. And the fact that people are so focused on everything besides the games. Gamergate is barely even about games. Barely. I'm even, I would be surprised if even half of the fucking people who are part of the movement actually play games actively. I would be. And for the opposition, I doubt any of you play video games. Any of you. And yet you're trying to talk about video games. What the fuck ever happened to just playing the fucking game and having fun with it? What happened to just putting the game in your fucking console, just sitting back and playing some games and not thinking about, oh, this character is too scantily clad, or oh, why aren't there more black characters in this? And I'm black and I don't give a shit, okay? And I don't like the fact that I have to disclaim that I'm black, but hey, I'll probably have some feminist comment saying that I'm a white privilege. Even though I'm black, fucking bitch. But why is gaming so about all this other bullshit drama? About resolutions and fucking... F and all this bullshit and not about games. Not about games. Gaming, not about games. It's a fucking joke. It really is. It's It makes me fucking sad. And it's part of the reason why I've been so chill recently trying not to make videos all the time. Because I just want to play games. Well, I can't now because i got to, things to do, but I just like to play games. I just like to play games, and the fact that gaming has become such a fucking joke, and all this other bullshit about resolutions, and the fact that we're getting fucked by developers and publishers with day one DLC, season passes, DRM, all this bullshit. You know, on-disc DLC pre-order bonuses, fucking exclusive retail emissions, and then we got all this social justice warriors shit, all this feminism shit, all this ethicate in games journalism, all this bullshit, and it has to fucking stop, and that's what I want to do on YouTube, I just want it to stop, I just want it to fucking stop, so that I can just sit down in my fucking computer chair, turn on my console or on my PC, play the fucking game, and not have to worry about all this bullshit. It's bullshit. And I'm sure many of you agree as well. But regardless, Gamergate people, refocus and keep doing what you're doing. Because even though Gamergate right now is a bit of a mess, you, I still think you're fighting the good fight. I still agree mostly with you. I don't agree with the people who are threatening at all. I don't agree with the doxing at all. But let's get real. Both sides have been doing shady shit. And the fact that I've had so many people try and tell me the only one side of the equation, the people part of Gamergate, are the pieces of shit. I'm sorry, but any of you who think that they're the only assholes, or that they're the majority of the assholes, you're a fucking moron. I'm sorry, but you are. You're a fucking idiot. I hurt your feelings. Get fucking used to it. But Gamergaters, well, Gamergaters, if you want to be part of the movement. I'm never going to be part of your movement. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and have my own opinions. And I recommend that a lot of you don't try and be hive-minded as well. But even still, I would rather agree with a less coherent truth than a solid fucking lie. To quote th uh, Razor Fist, I, would, I, I agree more with you in, in that you just want to talk about games. You just want this bullshit to end. I'm sure a lot of you do. To just turn it back into gaming is about games. And this bullshit has to stop. So, fuck you, feminists, who have diverted Gamergate from what it should have been about into bullshit. Fuck you, social justice warriors, who have completely fucked everything up and are too sensitive to handle just playing a video game that is meant to be about fun and not a real accurate reflection of the world. Fuck the game's journalists who are ethically fucked and who have been insulting gamers and being pieces of shit. Fuck the people who've been doxing. Fuck the people who have been threatening everybody and threatening violence on people that they dislike. And seriously, just a another courtesy one. Fuck you to everybody who's just been spreading misinformation. You are the worst of all. Fuck all of you. I'm Fringy. Thanks for watching Fringy Frequency. I'll catch you in the next one.